You have been buried with Christ in baptism, through which you also rose again by faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome to all of our parishioners, our friends, our visitors, as we gather to celebrate the Eucharist on this Saturday, in the fifth week of Easter. Of course, we honor the Blessed Mothers of this Saturday morning, and a very special welcome to all of you as we gather around the altar and celebrate this holy sacrifice. And we begin, as we always do, by standing humbly in the Lord's presence, calling to mind our sins, asking for God's forgiveness and mercy. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul reached also Derbe and Lystra, where there was a disciple named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. The brothers in Lystra and Iconium spoke highly of him, and Paul wanted him to come along with him. On account of the Jews in that region, Paul had him circumcised, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they traveled from city to city, they handed on to the people for observance the decisions reached by the apostles and presbyters in Jerusalem. Day after day, the churches grew stronger in faith and increased in number. They traveled through the Phrygian and Galatian territory because they had been prevented by the Holy Spirit from preaching the message in the province of Asia. When they came to Mysia, they tried to go on into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So they crossed through Mysia and came down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision. A Macedonian stood before him and implored him with these words, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we sought passage to Macedonia at once, concluding that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. 
Know that the Lord is God. He made us. We are his, his people, the flock he tends. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. The Lord is good. His kindness endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, if the world hates you, realize that it hated me first. If you belonged to the world, the world would love its own. But because you do not belong to the world, and I have chosen you out of the world, the world hates you. Remember the word I spoke to you. No slave is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. And they will do all these things to you on account of my name, because they do not know the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Again, good morning and welcome to all of our parishioners and friends and visitors who are joining us here at the chapel to celebrate the Eucharist on this Saturday morning. And in a special way, we pray the intercession of the Blessed Mother, as we always do on Saturday mornings, particularly during the month of May, which is, of course, Mary's month. Today, as we listen to the readings, they're both encouraging and they also have a, a sobering message as well. We had the beautiful story of the Acts of the Apostles, a continuation of the, of the narrative of the activities and the life and the growth of the church in the beginnings of the church, in the early days of the church. Paul gone from place to place, all these places that I can't even pronounce the names of. Thank God that Linda read the reading, not me. But the thing is that Paul and the apostles were going forth throughout the world. And we kind of get a beautiful little hint of that as we listen to the responsorial song. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. And the only way that is possible is if they get to hear the good news. And that's what Paul and the apostles did from the very beginning. Once they were empowered by the Holy Spirit, they went out to all the world. And as we see in his travels, Paul comes across a young man with we find out later is a very young man named Timothy. And Timothy has, the Holy Spirit has wonderful plans for Timothy in the days to come, so he won't spoil what's going to happen with Timothy. But the whole idea is that when people hear the truth of the gospel, their, their hearts are, are transformed um, if they're open, if they're open to hear God's word. And Paul and the other apostles have some wonderful successes. Sometimes they they bring people around to the gospel by the thousands, and on other days they they go running out of town with their sandals in hand and tearing out the out the streets to get away from all the rocks being thrown at them, just to move on to another town, to a new opportunity to bring the spirit of God, to bring the gospel to others, and that's a beautiful thing. That's part of the joy of the gospel is bringing new people to the, the truth of the Word of God. But we also hear in our Gospel today that the flip side of being an evangelizer, you know, going on a mission, is that you're going to be misunderstood, and actually more than just misunderstood, but you're going to be hated. And if we stop and think about it and take that too personally, it could, it could defeat us, it could make us say, okay, well, this didn't work out, I'm going home. You know, I can't take all this pressure, I can't take this negativity of people yelling at me, screaming at me, not believing what I'm trying to say. Um, but Jesus has a very sobering thought for all of us. He said, you know, if the world hates you, realize that it hated me first. If you belonged to the world, the world will love its own. But because you do not belong to the world, and I have chosen you out of the world, the world hates you. 
So in a very real way, the fact that the world doesn't embrace us automatically reminds us maybe we're on track, that we're truly spreading the good news. Because the, the good news, the gospel, is a two-edged sword. Um, it cuts both ways. A lot of people reject the word of God, reject the invitation or the demand to change your life in order to follow God and walk in His ways. People want it both ways. They want to be close to God, but on their terms, you know, do it my way. And we don't get to do it our way. We have to do it the Lord's way. And we're reminded every week that we gather, even at home as we watch live stream liturgies, you know, when we profess the creed, I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. We don't get to change the rules or the teachings as we heard in the first reading that Timothy, um, Paul was busy with his other helpers explaining with the teachings of the church, the, teaching, the teachings of the apostles, the presbyteries of Jerusalem. They were bringing out all the truths of the faith that the church at that time believed and was spreading out to the people. And all each person who hears the word gets to choose, will I accept it? or reject it. And we as disciples, as followers, as missionaries of the gospel, we're called to be like Sergeant Friday, one of my favorite characters, just the facts, just tell them the truth, and it's up to them, and the working of the Holy Spirit in their lives, in their hearts, and their souls, to embrace the gospel or not. It's not about us being successful or a failure, it's whether or not that person embraces the truth. And the greatest gift that God gives us is the freedom of, of we have the free will of our conscience to say yes or no, to accept him or reject him. So we can never take it personally if someone opts to reject the gospel as we preach it and teach it and share it. Um, we just move on. And that's the beauty of being a disciple, a missionary. You, just, you keep on trucking, you keep on moving on, keep on spreading the gospel. Don't let any f sense of failure or um, low performance kind of you know, dissuade us or discourage us. There's the next town, there's the next person to bring the good news to. And we ask for the grace always from the Holy Spirit to do it joyfully. church through priesthood or religious life, may the Holy Spirit's gifts of fortitude and wisdom guide them in their decision making, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in public office, may the Lord help them face the challenges of their duties with patience and discretion, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For family members experiencing discord, may their hearts be open to the light of Christ and bring them reconciliation, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people gathered here, may the Lord make known His will for them as they seek their life's meaning and purpose, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they be welcomed into paradise by the risen Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the soul of Leonard Vysotsky, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And as always, we take a moment to remember all those who have asked for our prayers and all those we have promised to pray for. For all these and their intentions, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers we pray to you this morning. Through the intercession of your blessed Mother, we ask this through Christ the Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have received the wine of God, the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and the work of human hands. May you become the body of Christ, our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and the work of human hands. It will become the blood of Christ, our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my friends, in my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept a sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, Holy Father, this offering of our humility, which we bring to you joy as we commemorate the Blessed Virgin Mary, and grant, we pray, that it may be for us who are joined to the sacrifice of Christ, our consolation here on earth, and our eternal salvation, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Together let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name in veneration of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived her only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the light, the eternal light, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices we pray blend with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus the Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples. Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
and so were ascended to the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your son, Larry Wysoski, for whom you are called from this world to yourself. Grant that Lenny, who was united with your son in a death like him, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that when the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, our Lady of Mount, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and martyrs, Saints Francis and Clare, each of our patron saints and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Will 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please join us in an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come, at least spiritually, into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.